Coming in somewhere between 58, 5,900 pounds, depending on how you have it equipped, what options you do or don't add. The 263 BHXL Wildwood for another season here at Haylet RV at Coldwater, Michigan. I'm always glad to see it. Uh, the X Lite series, I think, has enjoyed some really strong, important updates. Like they are now completely carpetless. They are now featuring the full Versa Lounge, like the Big Brother Wildwood that previously was not here. And as we go through this one, you'll see that we've outfitted it with some options and upgrades that uh, are easily overlooked by someone who um, isn't experienced at comparing RVs. But I wanna really point those out because those are features I think will drastically affect your everyday use of enjoyment of this camper. And that extra kind of in-depth information, that's what we really try to give you here at Haylet RV. We want you to make sure you're finding your second camper the first time. She's got that half ton towability range, the super slide for rainy day space, big windows, a <laughs> lot of good qualities going on in this one. I like this camper. Now this is and has been actually for a number of years one of, if not sometimes the most popular Wildwood X-Lite bunkhouse model available out there and for good reason. The floor plan is excellent. You'll see later that it has full travel accessibility. We've got the, the bunk space for the kids, a private bedroom for mom and dad or whoever, grandpa and grandma, I don't know, uh, you and me, me and her kind of thing. But when they upgraded it to that carpetless slide system and then they give it the full Wildwood Versa Lounge that previously was only available in the Big Brother Wildwood, not the X-Lights, I think they kind of took this thing to the next level. Now, if you would like to learn more about the Versa Lounge, if you've never heard of it or if you're only somewhat familiar with it, hang to the end of this video. I've got something like a six and a half minute video chunk that I'll include for you where you can learn all about that. But in the meantime, let's get moving through the rest of the floor plan. One of the major upgrades that we've applied to this camper, and it is the kind of stuff you've really got to watch for when you're comparing around, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the centralized air conditioning. This is standard non-ducted air. It's the same power, but it's not nearly as efficient or effective when the air is only getting it dumped into one spot as opposed to blasting around the entire RV. That's those little detail things that as an actual RV user, myself, I pay attention to when I'm specking out and building our equipment here at Halet RV. Now, whether it's this tabletop or in the bathroom or over here in the kitchen, it is all a sealed edge press membrane material, and that is one of the reasons that they're able to recess that sink to give you a little more prep space. And that dish drying rack right there, not only is that useful for obviously drying the dishes, but you can also roll it up like a newspaper and swat your husbands with it, ladies. <laughs> At least that's what my wife says. I don't know. Now, if you're also noticing there's a countertop to cabinet bottom backsplash under that overhead cabinet space, we will come back to the kitchen to see it in more detail. Quick mention, though, of that 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Uh, Wildwood was the first mainstream brand to offer that and since then have you noticed how almost everybody has started jumping on that bandwagon? Wildwood really pushed the envelope. They were doing it before it was cool and they took some risks and that's really one of the things. Wildwood has become one of the real trendsetters of the RV industry. Like mark my words a year from now I will bet your paycheck that you will start to see more and more RV companies out there using some version of the Wildwood Versa Lounge. Uh, of that, I have no doubt whatsoever. Uh, now, back here, let's take a look at these corner bunks. It has one of my favorite features, and that is the open-air ladder wall because it makes the RV look and feel so much larger despite being smaller than a, uh, a private quad bunk or something like that in the back. Like this is smaller than a 28 VB XL Wildwood that you'd have here at Halet RV. The bunks are open, but there's nothing wrong with that either. You know, they're just different strokes for different folks. Keeping the camper shorter, lighter, and less money. Those are good features too. You might also notice if I peek around the corner here, uh, kind of obscured a little bit by that curtain I got flipped up there. But USB plugs for the upper and lower bunks. Just tiny details like that making a big difference. That is, by the way, it's a fire escape window, which I hope no one ever has to take a head dive out of that window due to fire reasons. But uh, the good news is that is a serious airflow egress window. So you can get some good breezes roiling through here. Uh, there's also little details I like on Wildwood, like the fact that they're actually giving us a digital thermostat. If you read a lot of RV forums, one of the first things they say is get rid of the uh, factory thermostat, put a digital one in so you can see what you're doing. Well, 
They just do it standard. It looks like I do need to flip it from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Oh, no. It, it just is that cold. Holy crap. Okay. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> back here in the bathroom, take a look at the leg room here. I was actually very pleasantly surprised with the amount of leg room that my 6'3 frame, and I am a long-legged dude, a lot of my height does come from my legs and not necessarily like from my body there. Now, the shower surround paneling is standard. You can see how they swap to a standard shower, but up top there, you see that skylight? That is not a standard piece of equipment, and I like to put it in because, as you see here, it allows me to stand straight up and down in the shower. Now, when I'm rinsing my head, I have to tilt my head forward to the shower head. So having to have my head in the skylight doesn't personally bother me very much. It's located intelligently. It's very comfortable to use. And we also do still have a, uh, a simple power vent fan up there. But I tell you, if those are the little kind of things you're looking for, like you want a bigger vent fan, give our team here at Halet RV a call. We can uh, apply a larger vent fan upgrade for you here through our parts and service center before you ever take it home. Now, uh, over here, once again, all sealed edge countertop material, and I want to sneak in through that doorway so that you can see this is a medicine cabinet, not just a mirror glued against the wall. Flipping around the other way, I think is really the textbook example of how the Versa Lounge benefits you. Because if you choose to add uh, entertainment, then that lounge allows you to face straight toward the television. But this is a kind of camper that a lot of people like myself, I wouldn't be putting a TV in my camper. Um, now, everybody camps different. I don't judge those that want entertainment in their RVs. I'm simply saying that a lot of people here probably aren't as concerned about that. You're probably more worried about building family memories, going outside, getting the kids a little dirty, hosing them off, taking them to the pool, getting a little R&R, &R, something like that. But if you do want a more traditional dinette arrangement, once again, first lounge to get you there. And again, please hang tuned to the end of the hang tuned, whatever. Uh, stay tuned and hang tight, whatever, to the end of the video so that you can see all the storage that comes with the Wildwood Versa Lounge. Speaking of which, how about we get that kitchen crack a lacking and check out all that goodness? And we're going to start with a little bit of storage around that electric space heating fireplace, which is a cool standard feature on these. It gives you the ability to put some extra heat in the camper without burning up your propane. And in weather like this today, where it's cold, but it's a little bit above freezing, that's where this RV really shines, and that's where that feature is going to really be uh, appreciated and beneficial. Plus, the cu uh, clutter-cutting shoe garage down below that. And something I like is, last year, those cabinets did not go all the way to the floor, and... It felt a little bit incomplete. I love the fact that Wildwood just put that little update in there. It's a little thing they probably didn't have to do, but they're always looking at their RVs. Even though this RV was very popular, they said, how can we make it even better? Now, um, <laughs> this is a little ghetto, but the RV is very much not level right now, and some of the doors keep wanting to close on me. So I use some of the cushions from the Versa Lounge to keep it open to get you down there where you can take a look at the uh, uh, wastebasket storage space. Similarly, over here, this thing has a giant pantry, but again, the door didn't want to stay open. But hey, you know what? That's showbiz, baby. You improvise. You keep on going. And look at this. The pantry is as big, if not bigger than the refrigerator. Now, you could use this partially for pantry space. You could use it uh, maybe for some dresser space for the kids. I think those Versa Lounge totes that you'll see later in the video will be very beneficial for you there. There's also extra tote storage up in the bedroom that we'll see that you could easily use for clothing storage as well. Now, one of the interesting things here that really helps them make a good product and keep the cost under control is the way Wildwood's found a way... The way Wildwood has found a way. Good job, Josh. Uh, that comes from the redundancy department of redundancy, who tells you time in both London and England. You get the idea. But the fact is, uh, from basically the pantry and the slide forward, this camper is like an exact match for a 28 VBXL Wildwood here at Halet RV. So if you like what you see, but you're like, ah, I wish it had uh, a private bunk room instead of the open bunks. Well, that's the 28 VBXL. Or... If you say, um, you know, that I like that VBXL, but it's a little long, it's a little heavy for me. Do you have something a little bit shorter, a little bit lighter? And yeah, that would be this one. And that's what's really cool about their lineup. They've given a lot of consistency to it. They've given you a lot of good features that are reused across different models. So uh, you can really kind of zero it into exactly what works for you. Now, 
naturally, of course, we have TV hookups across from the bed. But notice how they're using the same window shades here in the bedroom that they used in the living room. I actually kind of give Wildwood a little bit of a nod. I don't know that there's other travel trailers in this class that do a better bedroom just because of the consistency factors that they're offering here. A lot of campers in this class, once you get to the bedroom, it is bare. But they're still doing things like the CPAP storage cabinets. You have USB and household outlets on both sides of the bed. You can see the, the outlets on the inside of that cabinet over there. Uh, it also allows you, like, even if you're not going to be a CPAP user, if you just want to have something in there for quick and easy access, it's always going to be available. Also, I love that big viewing breeze window directly uh, across from the, well, other breeze window uh, here in the bedroom that is currently covered by the shade that we saw just a second ago. And then little details like this actually including a light switch in the bedroom. This is a class and category that is dominated by everything being price sensitive and cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. And yet they're still including these nicer features up here because it's an area, it's a room you're gonna use, see, feel, and touch every day, but we're still not done. Because like I said, they've got extra storage little solutions here in the bedroom. This is a storage space that a lot of people don't tend to use frequently, but Wildwood has made it something that you can use and enjoy on a daily basis. A little kind of slipper shoe garage, a little flip-flop garage down below that thing. The other thing is notice how uh, there's like the little name card holders on each of those totes. So if it's like, uh, you know, my, uh, my family, I could have one tote dedicated to me, one to my wife, one for my kid, and then the other one also for my kid. <laughs> because anyone... Anyone with children knows that they just use up so much space. Uh, speaking of space, they did a really good job of this here. And uh, it's actually dramatic, the difference it'll make. When we close this slide out, this camper remains very accessible. Now, with the slide closed, you got to do a little bit of the travel trailer two-stepping. But you can get through here without opening up the slide out. Which is actually very important, because this is the type of slide you either want to use all the way open or closed. This slide system is not friendly to partial extensions. So uh, the way that they have this peninsula countertop and the sofa set up, you can just kind of weave your way through here and you don't have to actually climb over anything. It gets a little tighter sometimes, but you see that just like I did, you can navigate back through here. And really, you don't lose access to a single thing in this RV. It is what I would call turtle friendly, um, where, uh, I, and, I, and I don't mean like Donatello Raphael, I, I mean <laughs> more like a turtle with its head stuck in the shell, yet still being able to function. That's more what I'm talking about here. Now I got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle song stuck in my head, man. Now, Wildwood is, to me, one of the purest examples of what I call smarter class camping. Uh, they are really good at zeroing in on the features that I think really matter most and providing a very high-value product. Like, they give you that, they give you good looks where they can, but it's always smart construction. Like, they use a very thick nose skin on the, uh, the front end there, because when it's not corrugated, a smooth aluminum loses some strength, so they bulk it up a little bit, which also means the whole front end of this thing uh, basically has the profile of, like, a laminated trailer, but it's also, the whole thing's like stone deflecting. Uh, up front here, we've got our dual propane tanks with auto changeover regulator, standard power tongue jack, which is a nice thing that uh, previous seasons you had to upgrade to. Um, and just little details like this, like on the plug, just so that you got a, uh, I'm sorry, on the tongue, you got a place to put your plug, you got a place to put your uh, tow safety chains, just so they're not like wrapped around the chassis or dragon or whatever. It's just nice that they give you a dedicated place for things like that. Also smarter features like a dedicated battery disconnect. Now you can turn that refrigerator off on the inside, which is great, but there's other things that are constantly, slowly trickle parasitic drawing from your battery 12 volt supply. So that disconnect is very nice when the RVs in storage just straight, shut it down. The same way that the girls would shut me down in high school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was practicing social distance before it was cool, but back then we just called it being in band class. <laughs> so good look at those big panoramic windows. And you see those little brackets at the top corners of the slide? That is a little prep point if you want to add a slide awning. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? That's little stuff we can help you with here at Halitz. There's really not much we don't do. I'd like to direct your attention real quick to behind the spare tire. You see a couple hookups there. One of them in particular I think is important because you don't usually find it at a smarter class, budget, size, price point, uh, market segment, whatever you want to call it. And that's a black tank flush. 
And uh, I don't know if you folks have ever had to fight with the dreaded Pyramid. Um, but having that black tank flush kit there can first of all just prevent that from happening and secondly give you the advantage in that battle should uh, that unfortunate instance ever occur. She's got uh, plywood floor decking, walk-on roofing, she's backup camera ready, and we have outfitted this one with some extras over here on the campsite that I think you're going to enjoy. Now something Wildwood is really smart and conscious about is the way that their awnings interact with their entry doors. They do this as often as they can. They make sure the entry door isn't going to smash into the awning arm. If you notice, both the front and rear entry doors have enough clearance so that door can open all the way, as I've done on that rear uh, bathroom entry door back there, without hitting an awning arm. Those awnings are pretty good uh, at absorbing impact vertically, so like from rain falling down on top of it. They are not designed to have, uh, you know, the arms twist sideways. If that happens, they're pretty much done. And if you get a kid flying out of the bathroom, flinging that door, even though it's an anti-slam door, kids have a way of throwing things, uh, they want to make sure you're not going to break the awning arm, you know, ruin your trip. Uh, now back here you see that strong arm stabilizer jack. That's something that Wildwood does standard that pretty much nobody else in this class is really doing. Maybe somebody is, but I'm not really aware of anyone else doing it. And I absolutely love these things because that right there, and there's uh, the same jacks on the front. You have four of these on the camper total, one for each stabilizer jack. And they will take like almost all of the wiggling and the jiggling out of the RV. Actually, if you notice the RV is wiggling right now, it's because we got Mr. Mike doing some quality control on the inside of her right now, making sure that everything's on the up and up before you folks take her home. Then we actually pull it inside the shop and do a full burn on it. Then before you take the uh, RV home, we do a full burn again. A full burn is where we actually fire everything up, basically. Now, out here, this is another optional piece of equipment we've added to this RV. And it's another reason why maybe you'll find a dollar cheaper one somewhere else, but maybe it has fewer features than what you're looking at on our Halet RV Wildwoods. And that is the little camp kitchen here. I like the improvements they've made on this. Switching over to that griddle system, and if you notice, it actually has like a, a heat shield uh, kind of sh shell that it sinks into so that you can use this nice sealed edge countertop space up here. They didn't just leave a metal hutch in there, they gave you some actual counter space. Keeping some drinks outdoors is always very handy. And inside that fridge is the little blue coily hose that you could hook up over here to do some campsite cleanup. So very nicely outfitted. Now, if you're not into the whole griddle thing, you could actually remove that. You could just use that as like, in a sense, almost a slide open prep space, but you'll maintain the use of that gas grill quick connect down there. Very handy if you're like a Blackstone enthusiast. Now they're using the stable steps here. They were previously using the LCI step. They've swapped over to the Moride step above system. And I, I don't have anything against the LCI stable steps. I feel with what Moride's done here with the quick adjust, easy adjust legs, where all you do is pull on the leg and it extends and locks in place like a drawbridge. That is awesome right there. But Something else that's really cool on these, let me get this door open. By the way, when you're going to manipulate these steps, get the door all the way open. And you can see I'm doing this one-handed. It ain't hard. You see those pins in the hinges right there? If you wanted to, you could pull those pins and you could completely remove that step. So if you just didn't like that step, if you want to do something else, uh, if you were uh, at a storage depot, uh, like a uh, trailer storage facility, and you're parked too close to the trailer next to you, you could pull the steps off, you could put them in the down position, and then relock them in place. It's just, it's a simple, easy, smart thing that they've done there. But simple, easy, and especially smart are three words that just define Wildwood through and through and through. Simple side mount uh, portable prep plug uh, for a solar panel right there. You can see how we've got the magnet holdbacks for easy access to our baggage compartments. And down here, that, considering the size of camper that we're in, that is one generous pass-through compartment. But even the attention to detail up here, so these are the different handles and things you might need uh, for your RV, like a, a power tongue jack, like a override. The um, top thing there that looks like something you put, put up the back side of cattle to prod it, I don't know. Uh, that is for those JT strong arm stabilizers if you don't want to bend over quite so far to tighten those down. But down below, they actually include the hex nut adapter for their stabilizer jacks. So not only are they giving you the strong arms to give you enhanced stability, they're also giving you the, the jack to make it quicker and easier to operate these. And something else 
that isn't overtly obvious is that the stabilizer jacks used on Wildwood RVs are actually rated to handle more weight than most travel trailer stabilizer jacks, which basically translates into something that can have even more stability than a power stabilizer jack. That is one of the things I like about these. When it comes to stability, I absolutely give the best in class uh, designation to Wildwood, and I'm gonna go close that awning before the wind picks up. And one last thing before we wrap up, I mentioned the spare tire previously, but what I didn't mention is how it's actually an optional piece of equipment. So remember once again, when you're out there, when you're shopping around, when you're comparing, we've got this thing built the way you're going to want to use it. Not the way that's necessarily just the dollar cheapest, but you don't want to spend this kind of money and then immediately have regrets that you wish you'd have just sprung a couple bucks more to get the one that had the equipment you really wanted. So if you're ready to go camping, let's get cooking. <laughs> Dad jokes are all I got, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with us today, guys. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, leave me some comments. Let me know what you like. Let me know if I missed something or if you have any questions. I'll do my best to assist. And as always, remember we don't do hidden fees at Halid RV. We're family owned and operated, but we do just about everything else. So if you need hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, you need the RV delivered, you need anything in between, we'll get you there. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy Halo camping, everybody. Appreciate it. So starting now, keep in mind that this is just generic footage to show you how the Versa Lounge works in all its different variations. Uh, because we carry so many Wildwoods, and this is available in so many models, and it takes a lot of time to juggle between all these different formats to do my job properly, I thought I'd kind of record something a little more generic, and I think you can definitely get the idea. So first of all, in the Super Slides of Wildwoods, you see that they do have the blackout kind of roller shades. What is really nice is they have slide side breeze windows. I just have those covered up so that window all the way down there on the end will open for airflow, regardless of what configuration you have the seating in. So if you're looking at it right now, this is what I call traditional, where you've got yourself uh, you know, a, a U dinette or a two bench dinette, because there are variants of the Versa Lounge both ways, depending on the floor plan you're looking at, and then a, uh, a sofa over here. And that is a very normal configuration. You don't, you know, see a whole lot of variance there. But if you take note, that rear, uh, well, the the, uh, the seat back closest to us on that U-Dinette, it looks a little different. That's because it's removable. So if you don't want it there, it doesn't have to be there. And that's what's really cool about this thing. This is like phase one of about five of the Versa Lounge arrangements. You can just create this wide open kind of super dining lounger hybrid combo job. Now that's a very technical term, you know. Uh, I understand if you need to back the footage up a little bit to uh, to pick up what I'm putting down right there, but you, you folks, you're tuned into Halo RV. I think, I think you're pretty sharp. What's kind of cool about this is it kind of makes it easy to sort of slide over the table, slide over to the seating. There's, there's really no like one way that you have to use this. It's just the way that works best for you and your family. Next, it folds down into one super slide, super seating sleeper setup. I know that's a lot of alliteration for one thing in RV, but you get the idea. Now, what I love about this is this is found, the Versa Lounge setup like this is found in all super slide Wildwood and X-Lights once again. Now, you tend to find a lot of bunkhouse models in those families, but they make quite a few couples campers too. So that means like a super slide rear living couples camper can convert down into being exceptionally guest friendly. And it's long enough that like, I'm a tall person. If I had my head on the right hand side of the frame and then there was a second copy of me sleeping with my head against that far wall, you know, we, we might touch toes, but hey, no big deal. And most of the time you curl up and you're a side sleeper, you could make that work for a night for a weekend. So it's good for more than just kids. It's also like adult guest friendly or frankly, some people have really big kids and they need a little bit more than, uh, you know, just a conventional sleeper uh, bunk setup. They need something longer. But one of the best and most unsung qualities of the Wildwood Versa Lounge is all of this huge tote storage space that you're looking at. This is, I believe it's 20.1 cubic foot of total tote storage. They're food safe containers, so if you want to put some crackers or Oreos or snacks for the kids in there, it's not going to be contaminated if the RV, you know, gets hot while it's in storage. You know, you could leave stuff in here if need be, if they're 
especially if they're, you know, like non-perishable kind of things, but even if they're perishable stuff, you know, short-term kind of thing. You see that under the sofa, there's like a drop-down face that, uh, you know, flops down and you can pull those totes out. They're stackable. Uh, and, and frankly, guys, if you don't need them, don't use them. You know, there's nothing that says they have to stay here. They're not bolted to the camper by any stretch of the imagination. And where they're really useful is especially in bunk models, because what you can kind of do is dedicate each tote to one of the people in the RV. Like, say, the kids. And what you can do, my daughter, uh, Chloe, what I could say is, okay, Chloe, I want you to take this tote, go upstairs to your room, uh, there's clothes laying on your bed, I want you to put all those clothes in this, and then bring it back to me. And bang, the kid's packed. It's an easy way to help get the kids involved. It's also an easy way to help keep all the kids' toys and clutter and everything, uh, you know, uh, under control. Now, under the rear dinette bench on you dinette models, because remember, there are some uh, just two bench dinettes, so this part of the video may not necessarily apply. Please keep that in mind. But they leave it wide open. And I like that because you could stuff more totes or duffel bags down there if you're so inclined, but I have long legs. And when I sit at something for a while, I tend to lean forward, and I like to curl my legs under me. Now, that's just me, but I looked at that and said, oh my gosh, I could actually be comfortable here. Whereas, <laughs> you know, a lot of dinettes just, they aren't comfortable for a bigger person like me. And I think I could really get along just fine on this one over here. But I think most of the time, this is how everyone's going to have this set up. At least most folks, not everybody. I tend to speak in absolutes. It's kind of a flaw that I have because it gives us this extra large stretch out kick back, relax, cuddle up with the family napping lounge over here, whatever you want to call it. Somebody called it a fainting lounge on our YouTube channel? Is that, a, is that a thing? Is that like a regional thing? Is that something from down south or out west that just this little Midwestern boy I am, I don't know about the fainting lounge where you can just walk up and faint on this thing? I don't know. You get the idea. Anyway, I, I like the fact that I could just sit in the corner. I could stretch out. And on most models where you find the Versa Lounge, like this is a good example uh, it will actually help you face the entertainment center more organically and give you a more enjoyable experience overall. You know, there's just, there's so many good things. Like, I haven't even talked about the accent lighting over the slide that makes the whole RV look bigger. There's so many good parts about this. And what's cool is when it is in uh, L lounge, fainting, napping, family cuddle mode, whatever you want to call it, you don't lose a dinette. And where I think this is perfect is if you do have kids or guests like this, uh, if you're in a bunkhouse... You still have a little spot where you could sit down, make the kiddos a sandwich or, you know, hot pocket or whatever. You get the idea. Hot pocket. And, uh, <laughs> please don't sue me. You could uh, still have a little spot there. They could play some little board games or something, card games in the corner. But you're still kind of right next to everybody. Everybody's still in the mix. And that's what camping's about for me. It's trying to get everybody together so that everyone has a good time. And I think this is a great way to do that no matter your style of camping, no matter how many people are camping, this offers something for everybody. It's why I call it a Swiss Army sofa seat.